so this presentation is from Ripe NCC. Uh, it uh, has a lot of uh, details on all sorts of other tools Ripe NCC has been producing. But the one I'm going to talk about is Ripe Atlas. I should point out that I don't actually work for Ripe NCC. I don't even live in the Ripe service region. Um, but uh, I will gratefully accept their slide. Um, Ripe NCC is one of the five regional internet registries. Uh, regional internet registries assign uh, internet resources to uh, entities in their service regions. There's five of those. Uh, Ripe NCC uh, service region is Europe, the Middle East, and Russia. Uh, other service regions are Aaron, APNIC, LACNIC, and AFRINIC. If you're in India, uh, APNIC is the one you're uh, most likely to be interested in. APNIC is the Asia Pacific uh, Network Information Center. So if you are a network, if you have a network, uh, a real network, not, uh, not a home network, uh, you need an autonomous system number and you need some IP address space. And the people you get this from are your regional internet registry. Uh, usually you don't get them from the regional internet registry directly, you get them from a, uh, a, a Lira local internet registry, uh, and it, you know it's, it's the usual computer science tree with the roots at the top and the stem at the bottom. Um, uh, the Ripe NCC is a not-for-profit membership association that are based in Amsterdam, and in addition to um, assigning internet resources, they also make some tools. Um, one of these tools is the Ripe Atlas. Uh, tool. Uh, I, I actually have an atlas here with me and it bends in neatly in the background. It's not very big. Um, the Ripe Atlas is a global network of probes. This is a probe. It's not a global network, uh, which actively measure internet connectivity and reachability uh, from different parts of the planet. At the time these slides were written, which I don't actually know, uh, I, they, they reached my mailbox a couple of months ago. Uh, the Ripe Atlas system was collecting just shy of 10,000 results per second, which is a reasonable number of results to, to collect. Uh, and these results allow the Atlas system and its users to understand the state of the internet in real time. Um, and the way this works is that volunteers host a probe in their network. Uh, and the more probes we have around the world, the better the Atlas system will be at uh, measuring the state of the internet from anywhere to anywhere. The point of the, the internet is end-to-end -end connectivity. So the more probes you have, the denser network of probes you have, the uh, better quality or the, uh, the more valuable the results will be. If you've only got a probe in, the, uh, in deeply, organ uh, deeply organized, deeply urbanized areas, then you're only going to be able to measure those paths. It's very useful. Uh, or a lot more useful to have probes in more uh, distant parts of the world. So in, you know, before the world broke, uh, a bunch of us crazy people uh, flew around the world carrying boxes of these things and explaining to customs that they're you know, wireless access points. Uh, and we uh, get volunteers to host them in their, uh, in their part of the world. You know, most of this, these probes are uh, in uh, Europe, as you can see from this map on the screen, that's just because that's where they were born. Um, and several people have been distributing them around the world. Um, the system uh, is, is, you know, uh, subscribes to the gamification theory of modern internet technology. You earn credits uh, for your, uh, for hosting a probe, and you expend credits to perform measurements. So uh, let's talk about these measurements. Uh, your measurements can be uh, a different type of measurement. You can do a ping measurement, which measures latency on the internet. You can do a trace route, which shows your, your path, uh, the, pa the path your packets take uh, around the internet. You can uh, measure DNS, uh, TLS, HTTP, NTP, several uh, different kinds of things. Uh, you can also set up um, alarms that will work with your own monitoring tools. So if you're, uh, if you're running uh, a service on the internet, say a web page or a, a chat system or um, some app or what have you, uh, and you want to know how well the service performs from different parts of the world, uh, you can use the Atlas network to keep an eye on your um, on your service. Say, you know, I'm I'm hosting this app or I'm hosting this web page. It's sitting on a server somewhere in uh, in Germany, and uh, most of my users are in India. I would like to know. 
uh, what's the performance of this uh, server or how reachable is this server from India? Can users from India even reach my server? Can they resolve its DNS? Um, and you set up a right uh, Atlas measurements uh, to check from all the probes that are hosted in India to go and connect to your server in uh, in Germany and the RIPE Atlas system will tell you, right, uh, latency is uh, several dozen milliseconds. The trace route for some reason uh, goes to Singapore uh, before going to Germany um, and the DNS is full of errors. Uh, and you can put all of these details, you can put in your own measurement, uh, measurement in your own uh, monitoring system and uh, it will scream at you when things change. That's very useful. You can also test um, IPv6 connectivity uh, because that's obviously the future of the internet. Uh, the probes themselves I've briefly, briefly talked about, and they're very small. They're a couple of uh, cubic centimeters these days. The older probes were a bit bigger. Uh, currently, there's more than 10,000 of these things out there. And under ordinary circumstances, I would offer to throw them at you in the audience uh, upon extracting a promise from you that you will plug it in and take care of it and, uh, and actually host it. The uh, current generation of probes is built around a, a nano pie with a bunch of memory. Um, and I think they've all run out. So Leah's just disappeared from the call, um, but also we're not actually going to events anymore. So I can't give you a physical probe, uh, but I'll come to software probes in a moment. Um, another potential uh, way to participate in Atlas, if you have a large network, as I say, a data center, you could offer to host uh, an Atlas anchor. Uh, this is a rack mountable thing. Um, and there's about 600 of those, and 100 of those are virtual machines. But I think those are no longer quite as relevant because the world is moving to um, software probes, which I'll get to. Um, but the goal of the Atlas system is to get as many probes and as many ASNs, as many autonomous systems, so as many ISPs as possible in as many countries as possible. Uh, India is currently uh, reasonably well represented in the Atlas system in terms of absolute number of probes, but in terms of population and in terms of number of networks, it's actually still fairly uh, underrepresented. Uh, as I said earlier, better coverage means a better understanding of the state of the internet. The more probes we have um, on the more diverse set of networks, the better the end-to-end -end measurements are. Uh, there's, you know, we, we have plenty of coverage from, say, the US to Europe. We know just about every path from just about every meaningful ISP uh, in the US to just about every network in Europe, but from you know a rural network in South Sudan to a rural network in Papua New Guinea, uh, the coverage is not so great. Whether measuring such routes is meaningful or not, you know, is is, is, is open to interpretation. But uh, for the uh, you know you can't judge people on their measurements, uh, so we want to make every kind of measurement possible. Um, so, in order to uh, make it possible to continue to deploy probes even without us traveling and also in places where we could never travel in the first place, uh, there's now also software probes. Uh, unfortunately, these only run on Linux. Uh, so, if you are running FreeBSD, you need to set up a virtual machine and it's all a, it's, it's all a bit faffy, uh, but it can be done. Um, and uh, basically, this brings the uh, right Atlas probe uh, into much wider potential deployment. If you have a machine somewhere which can run a Linux virtual machine, uh, or if someone finally gets a number of round two its together to port the thing to uh, to run natively on FreeBSD on any FreeBSD machine, um, you could run a right Atlas probe. So if you've got a machine somewhere uh, with space for a VM, you can spin up uh, a virtual machine and uh, install a right Atlas probe on it. And you can have a probe just as if uh, you were in an event and someone threw uh, a physical probe at you. So um, that's actually me out of slides. There's a bunch more slides in this presentation about other tools uh, the um, RIPE ACC folks have. I'll stop uh, sharing the slides. Um, but uh, that was the end of the presentation. I think it's more fun if we uh, actually go into some real live uh, demo of how this thing works. Uh, so I will try and find the web browser window. If anyone has questions, you can shout them at me um, while I look for a web browser.
Yeah, sure. If anybody has questions, feel free to unmute while. It's over. You know, if you're feeling like you've been hit by a machine gun, um, can I share this window? I probably can. Uh, share screen. Click, click. Okay. And I have to find the window. There we go. Right. So this is the uh, Ripe Atlas. Welcome to Ripe Atlas. I've helpfully logged in uh, and I have a little link to my atlas uh, and I can poke at measurements because measurements are nice. Um, so if I wanted to, uh, well, these are the, these are all the measurements that are currently ongoing. Uh, someone is doing all of these, all of these tests live in the system. That's all great fun. Uh, but let's try to create a measurement. Uh, let's try to, uh, for just for fun, let's do a ping measurement because it's the first one in the list. Uh, the target of this measurement, uh, let's take uh, let's take my machine here. Uh, which machine shall I go for? Uh, let's take the machine that's sitting in the room next to me, uh, which is called Tooth Fairy. So you give it the target of your test. Um, this one, you know, is a host name. You could stick an IP address in there. You could stick uh, a host name in there. Doesn't really matter. I am interested in IPv6 because I like IPv6. Um, I'd like to run this test uh, every 240 seconds. That's so just the default. Uh, but actually, I'm going to configure it to just run it once because I'm not interested in this test more often. Um, so I'll send. Well, actually, I'll send 10 packets of. 64 bytes because I like nice round numbers. Um, uh, where would I like to ping from? Well, I don't want to ping from worldwide. I'm actually only interested in uh, India. And let's use a wizard because we like wizards. Uh, and where is India again? Uh, it's over here. No, uh, India is over here. So I just give me all the probes in India. Um, I can do this. There we go. I think I've selected a little bit more than India. Let's go for greater India, shall we? Uh, that's me kicked out of India for life. Uh, right. So all of these probes in, in India and, and other Indias uh, are going to uh, run a one-off measurement and just run it right now. Uh, create my measurements. Yes, yes, yes. Now let's look at my measurements. So um, it's instant gratification as, as things should go. So it's now running. Click, 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 click. So let's look at my measurements. And of course, the demo effect is real. If I click the measurement, nothing is going to happen. Yeah, I've made it invisible. Um, okay, I'm not very smart. That was not to show me the measurements, that was high by measurement. Um, I have now lost my measurement. Clear my filter. There we go. Uh, it's still running. Well, I could see it in real life. Um, right, this is going to run my measurement and eventually it's going to return results. So instead of waiting for this, let's look at the pre previous measurements, which might actually work. Okay, it doesn't want to work. I don't know why this doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's a demo. And things never work when you're doing a demo. So I'll stop sharing the screen and listen for questions while I try to debug in, uh, in private. Right. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Let me poke at this. Of, yeah, there are a bunch of questions. Uh, Nemo has a question. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Nemo has a question, and he is also hanging out on YouTube, um, which is, is there a way, is there an easy way to get probes on cellular networks? Most of India connects via 3G, 4G networks now. Uh, that's two questions. Uh, is there a way? Yes. Is there an easy way? No. Uh, Swapnil, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, showed me a way to do this. And I'm going to put up his web page if I can find it again. Um, yes, there we go. I can do that. And I can share the screen. Uh, if I can find the appropriate button again. There we go. Here's the button. Um, 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 there we go. Uh, Swapnil 
would have shown you this web page himself. Uh, so he has uh, managed to make uh, a right atlas probe connect to a geo widget. Uh, so he's got the, the same little black gadget I have. He bought a uh, a little rootery thing, uh, a GL MiFi gadget, uh, connected the whole thing together, and that's how he runs measurements locally. Uh, the thing to be aware of is that. Um, many of these mobile networks you end up uh, paying per bit and the uh, right atlas measurements do consume bits uh, so you probably don't want to set up a postpaid plan and then get a bill uh, at the end of the month for you know the value of your house and that of all your neighbors uh, you want to use prepaid plans so that when you know when you run out of uh, when you run out of bits you can decide whether you want to invest in more bits or whether that's enough bits. Uh, so I, I think Swapmule does a prepaid thing and every now and again he goes out and gets a two gigabytes or five gigabytes um, um, top up for the SIM card he's using um, and, uh, and that works. So you can hack something together. Uh, you could, you know, that's with a physical probe. Uh, you could presumably also hook up a software probe to the same kind of gadgetry, uh, it just becomes a lot less portable. This with a five, with a last generation probe, a little MiFi gadget, uh, you can still walk around with your mobile measurements if, if that's your thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I suppose so. But let's see if Nemo has anything more to ask. Uh, Trouble, you still have a demo, right, to show? Uh, yeah, but it's not working because it's a demo. Uh, if I click a button, the button says no. Uh, well, the button doesn't say no, the button just doesn't do anything. Uh, so it's still running. Well, it claims to be running my tests, but it's or my measurements. Um, but the results are not uh, visible and the results of all my previous measurements aren't visible either. Um, so um, one of the faces in this call mentioned that they have been doing some measurements for a while. Maybe their measurements were better than mine. I think that was Gorshabad who said he had some measurements. Hi. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, at, at CS, we've also been uh, uh, running the Atlas probe uh, for a while. So if, if anyone's watching and wondering if this requires too much work, um, I've only received uh, two emails regarding that in two years, so it's not it's not a lot of work. And uh, what you get out of it is is a lot. As uh, as uh, Trouble was saying, you, you can do things for yourself. Maybe um, uh, and and there are blog posts on uh, their website that talk about these things. Just network connectivity in general, and uh, you can. Uh, uh, to me, Atlas is uh, very customizable. You can run tests repeatedly, and therefore, uh, I mean check whether your ISP is blocking a particular website, whether you can connect to it. Um, you can catch your uh, ISP doing other uh, shady stuff, including like throttling connections to uh, particular websites, etc. cetera. And uh, I, as a researcher, at uh, so I work at the Center for Internet and Society, and uh, we've been also uh, doing some work on network measurements and measuring web censorship in India, which I'll come to in a bit. But uh, these measurements are awfully useful for research as well. So on uh, uh, using uh, the data, you can detect internet outages, which may be intentional or otherwise, um, uh, routing mishaps that uh, keep happening regularly. And um, just generally because internet traffic has all gone up because we're all stuck at home using the internet for everything. So I guess uh, there are some insights to be drawn there about whether uh, there's uh, more congestion, network delays, etc. And uh, you, you can find great examples at the uh, Ripe Atlas website. And uh, what I'd also like to talk a bit about is, is the larger landscape of measurement tools. Um, so uh, you have the Ripe Atlas, which does a variety of measurements. I think it does the, it, it's capable of doing the maximum number of measurements uh, out of like uh, the, the landscape, but there are specific tools for certain things. So uh, you, you may have heard of the Open Observatory for Network Interference, uh, UNI, which uh, is perhaps a go-to tool for measuring web censorship. So it tries to connect to particular websites that may be blocked in your country and uh, their, their data set is also open and that is 
available as a mobile app and and, and a desktop tool as a uh, uh, CLI tool, etc. And uh, similarly, there's uh, uh, the Center for Applied Internet Data Analysis, which is CAIDA, and uh, th that's primarily aimed at measuring internet shutdowns and outages. And uh, just just uh, uh, before this talk on on the event page, I saw a very interesting comment from Zenum, which is about a blog post Kiran had written. Uh, I think around two years ago, and uh, it says uh, that uh, I, I think Kiran and others wanted to build a censorship detection service uh, uh, software for India, and I, I think that comment spoke to two things. One, one is about accessibility, which is a concern Nimu has already raised. Like, since most of internet users in India are mobile phone users, how how do we get these tools in their hands and um, uh, get get more measurements from areas that we haven't seen. Uh, so, for example, in any such tool, I, I, I've seen that um, uh, representation from smaller towns or villages in India is uh, abysmally low and uh, where mobile phones are largely more popular. And the second thing which uh, Kiran's comment spoke to was about how measurements can be used to make arguments that extend to the legal and policy world. And uh, that specific comment was about net neutrality. So in, in fact, you can use the RIPE Atlas tools, you can use UNI, et cetera, to uh, find out whether your ISP is uh, violating net neutrality. Uh, and uh, this is a point that also is made by Fenwick uh, McKelvey in uh, his book, Internet Demons, where uh, I, I think he's also calling for more network measurements to make these policy and legal cases. Uh, uh, and uh, this is something we've been also doing at CIS and recently we've um, launched Sensor Watch, which is available as a mobile app and it, it's on the Play Store and you can uh, download uh, it as an APK, etc. And what we're trying to do is run uh, measurements from mobile devices and they try to connect to a list of websites that are potentially blocked in India. And what we've seen in the recent past is that different internet service providers in India are blocking entirely uh, widely different websites. While they're only supposed to block websites when the government tells them to, they're blocking websites arbitrarily out of their own volition. And sometimes it's not clear why. Is Are they are they not complying with orders uh, properly? Or uh, uh, is there something more sinister going on as in they want to block uh, certain services because of business reasons, et cetera? And, uh, uh, really, and uh, I, I mean, some some of you, uh, including I know some people from Hasgeek were involved in the fight for uh, net neutrality in India, which uh, uh, which legally one may think that we have won, but um, uh, how do we ensure that the laws are complied with? And and uh, this this is a monitoring problem, and uh, this is squarely where uh, such network measurements come in, because in our recent test we found if they're blocking widely different websites, then net neutrality is being violated currently in India. So therefore, even if you have it in law, you do not have it in practice. And by running these variety of measurement tools, and, and I also encourage you to, of course, uh, check out Sensor Watch, which, uh, uh, CI, which we at CIS have uh, released recently. And um, uh, you can help uh, us sort of monitor net neutrality violations, web censorship in India, and uh, uh, possibly make a case for um, uh, the telecom regulatory authority or et cetera to start uh, monitoring for net neutrality violations and otherwise. Thanks, thanks, Kushabat, for this. I think Trouble's got his demo also working, so this is- um, Well, I haven't got the demo I wanted to do working because web pages are evil and never work where you wanted to. Um, but uh, Ripe Atlas also has a, a command line interface which is written in Python uh, and you can find on GitHub somewhere. Uh, I'll find the link in a moment. Uh, but it's not a CLI called Ripe Atlas, and you can just uh, tell it to report on a result. So this, if you recall from when I shared my screen earlier, uh, this number is the uh, measurement ID I've just set up. Uh, so if I just run this, remember it was a, a an IPv6 ping uh, from uh, everywhere 
uh, in India from any probe in India to the machine in my in my kitchen over there. Uh, if I just you know uh, please spit out the results, uh, this is a bit painful to read. Maybe if I make this window wider because IPv6 addresses are very wide. Um, this might make a little bit more sense. Right, there we go. Uh, let's pipe this into more uh, because there's more data than I'm willing to consume in one go. Bytes from a certain probe number, pro probe number 100278, uh, which has IP address mumble to, this is the, uh, the machine sitting in my kitchen, um, has, Succeeded uh, time to live 50, and these are the ping times. So the latency is about uh, 100, and you know, I gripping this is 110 ish milliseconds. Um, this probe uh, has an IPv6 address and can resolve Tooth Fairy, uh, which is in my kitchen, to this address, but it can't actually reach it. So it has presumably it has no IPv6, um, excuse me, route to me. Uh, same thing here. Same thing here. For some reason, this uh, this guy here, probe two nine eight one four, takes twice as long to get from India to Hong Kong as probe number one zero zero two seven eight. I don't know why this is. Uh, you could then go and do a trace route uh, to find this out. Um, speaking of trace routes, a couple of months ago when I was last doing this um, uh, presentation or one like it, I think I was handing out uh, things in February, I don't remember where I was in February, uh, somewhere else, uh, I did a trace route measurement from um, various parts of the internet to somewhere else. Uh, and then I get the trace route outputs if I tell the thing uh, to um, report on this result, and then I could go and analyze what, uh, you know, what routes are these things taking uh, from different probes. And that's all very useful. Um, so trace route and ping are just two measurements you can do with the uh, right Atlas right system. Uh, you could also do HTTP requests, you can do TLS requests, you can check NTP uh, coverage. Uh, there are several other things you can do uh, with the, uh, the right Atlas monitoring system. And you can get the results either through the web page, if web pages work for you, uh, or you can programmatically get them using the uh, right Atlas toolkits, uh, which is what I've just done now. And in my experience, that's just because I'm a troublemaker, uh, the command line works a lot more reliably than the web page, but that's just because web pages have got it for me.